So I'm passionate about things. Uh, one of the things that I'm particularly passionate about is games. I love board games, card games, video games. And of all the games that I'm passionate about, I absolutely love one called Werewolf. Uh, if you've never played the game Werewolf before, um, and if you play it for the first time, a lot of times you can become sort of entranced with it. And that's kind of how I feel about this game. I like this game so much that I made my own version of it. And that's what I want to talk to you about, is taking this love of something that you have and turning it into what turned out to be, for me, a business. So in the game of Werewolf, you can have anywhere from 10, 20, 30, 40 people, and they're each given a special role. Uh, they're either on the village team or on the werewolf team, and the villagers are trying to figure out who the werewolves are and to lynch them. The werewolves, who know who the other werewolves are, are trying to prevent the villagers from lynching them. And they're killing off the villagers one by one as well. It sounds horribly violent, but it's actually a lot of fun. People are talking, people are lying to each other, trying to convince each other like who is, is what. And one of the really neat things about this game is it can be played with something as simple as a deck of cards. You just give out cards to someone and say, this, is, this card represents what you are in this game. When I first learned the game, however, uh, I learned it with one of the commercial versions that were available about 10 years ago or so. And I just absolutely fell in love with the game. Um, and that's not an exaggeration. We're talking like restraining order kind of this game. Went to play it all the time. I absolutely loved it. And the versions that were available, they had some limitations. They didn't play the players. They had a limited number of roles available. There were all sorts of things that I just wish they did have. So I decided to make my own version so I could play it with my family and friends the way that I envisioned the game would actually be much more fun to play. So I set about making my own version that had tons of roles. And uh, it had much more uh, variations and just a lot more interesting things going on than I could find virtually otherwise. And I played this with my family and friends, and they started to say, hey, can I get a copy? Because I want to play that with other people, no matter what we have is my career. And so I made some more copies. And then eventually I got in my head that, hey, I could probably sell these to other people too. So I posted it online, started selling more and more, more copies. Now, in each one of these games, there's about 50 cards. Now, I was hand producing these, so pretty little laser printer, hand cutting them, about 50 cards in each game. That, over about a course of about nine months or so, I sold about 900 games. 50 cards, 900 games, that's about 45,000 cards that I cut over that amount of time. And I realized, wait, well, this is probably not the best way to make a great product here. So I decided, well, let's go the professional route. And I hired myself an artist. I all sorts of really unique artwork for each of the roles uh, in the game. I worked on the rule set and came up with a lot of different variations, a lot of ways to make the game kind of what I had envisioned when I kind of started really falling in love with this game. And um, throughout this process, I realized, you know, if I'm going to get this professionally produced, this is going to actually cost me some money. This is a big risk I'm going to take. I made so money from that other version of the game. But this is going to cost the tens of thousands of dollars range to get uh, this produced professionally. And so this was a big risk. But the passion that I felt for this game and how I thought, you know, I really had this vision for how well this game would turn out, uh, just led me down the path of saying, you know what, it's worth it. I'm going to just go throw caution to the wind for the most part, do the best that I can, and see what happens. So after doing that, the result that I got was horrible. I was um, just happy beyond words to see kind of something that's professionally produced that looks good. That's kind of what I envisioned this game should have And uh, of course, at that point, I'm stuck with a thousand copies of this awesome game, and I've got to go ahead and figure out how am I going to get this out to the public. So uh, that's when you start doing the grassroots sort of thing. So as much as I love the game, there's a lot of work to do to actually make it successful. So I sent it out to bloggers, uh, viewers, pretty much anyone I thought that actually could get the work of listening. Got some fantastic reviews. Um, one of the things a lot of people could tell right away was that I love the game. It came through because you know, it's a rule book, just a lot of attention to detail. And that sort of thing that people picked up on. And it was one of the things that made the, the game more successful. Uh, when I was down at the convention in LA, uh, I ended up playing some werewolf. Well, Someone who turned out to be a friend, Rick Summer, a guy on a man, and he absolutely loved the game and loved what I had done with it. And he ended up making a short little video for me where he promoted one of the, the versions of the game that I had, which is pretty awesome. Um, after that, it was, okay, I got this great game, 
start to get out there. How did I get in front of the board work? And that point, point of trade shows, I'm telling people about the game. The great thing about trade shows like this is people come up and they'll say, all right, I have this, this other version of the world. Why is this better? Which is the perfect question, because that's how I got here in the first place, was I had these other games, and I wanted to make something better. So I had a long list of games. Why is this version going to be everything else that's out there? But being on game store shelves is great. My biggest fear at this point is, what happens when someone else comes along and says, my game goes, you know what? I can make that better. I can make a better game. <coughs> so ever since then, the idea is, let me go ahead and enhance it. So over time, I've worked with artists to get better art for other products. Um, I've added all sorts of new capabilities to the game with expansions, uh, with uh, other, just methods of improving the overall gaming experience. Uh, at this point, there's several really different expansions that are the game. It's on through several grades. Each time, it's a little adjustment to be better and better and better. And it turns out that these things kind of build on each other, which is great. And as long as I'm remaining passionate about what it is that we're doing, trying to improve this, the game itself is getting better and getting around this as well. In fact, this year, uh, what you're seeing up here is that there's a new game based on this other game that I did. So, a uh, new game based on Ultimate World is a different game, some of the same concepts, but a lot of new games. So it's kind of branched out, supporting that. Uh, this one was actually brought to my attention by another designer that wanted to produce a game So, as a result, uh, this is showing a bunch of different games that the company produces, but the werewolf game um, has kind of become this cornerstone for everything else that I've done. It's kind of this constant stream of income. And that all basically all ties back to something that I was entirely, unabatedly passionate about.